Manor's Italian Bomb presents the first night of program, a copyrighted feature, Coast to Coast. Theater Time Broadway. Once again, you're invited to attend the opening night performance of a new play in the little theater off Times Square. All theater land thrills to those magic words, opening night. It's a supreme moment for the producer. It's the acid test for the author and the actors. They're all wagering their time and talent on their ability to please the public taste for entertainment. Will they succeed tonight? Will this new play be the sensation of the season? Well, there's one thing we do know. We don't want to miss any of the excitement, so let's get underway. Here's my cab. Won't you step in and we'll start for the theater? Across 42nd Street, beating to the rhythm of commerce in the daytime and to the gaiety of nightlife after sundown, and on just a short distance to the little theater off Times Square. Well, here we are. Have your tickets ready, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Look, is that Mr. Wolfgang going in the door? Hey, that looks like special food. Good evening, Mr. Bergsteiner. The usher will show you the box. Thank you. We'll go right in. before the play begins. I see that the title of tonight's play is Three Who Face Death, another original by Addison Simmons. The play is pure fiction, of course, and does not refer to real people or to actual events. In the star parts are Barbara Luddy and Les Tremaine. Mr. Tremaine is cast as Paul, a young professor of psychology. Miss Luddy is to play the role of Mary, a young lady whose life is endangered by an unexpected set of circumstances. As usual, there's an all-star cast. And now, here is Eric Sagerquist with his famous orchestra, Before First Church. psychology classes. If I didn't have my walk every night, I'd need to be looked at by a psychologist myself. I must join you more often, Sam. Dad, there's a car in front of the house. A roadster. Hmm. He's in it. Dad. That's Mary. No. It is Dad. Come on. Mary. Mary, honey. It is Mary. Mary, Mary, you've come back home. Mary. Mary, come on. Get out of the car. Mary. Oh. There's something wrong. Mary, what's the matter? Madden. We were inside. Yes. Come on, dear. Come in the house. I'm afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, dear. Open the door, Dad. Come in, Mary. I'm 
afraid. But there's nothing to be afraid of. Your home, Mary. In the living room, Pa. Yes. I've got to get away. Sit down there, dear. That's it. I've got to get away. What's the matter, Mary? Mary? Son. This amnesia. Mary, listen to me. Do you know who I am? Don't know. Dear, listen. You've had some trouble and you've come home. Everything's going to be all right now. Yes, dear. Paul and I will see that everything's all right. Paul? Son, I think she'd better get some rest first. She looks worn out. All right, then. Come along, Mary. You're going to get some sleep. Sleep? I'm afraid. Well, if you could only tell us what you're afraid of, Mary. Come on, try. I don't know. Who would that be? You stay with her, Dad. I'll go. All right, then. Now, don't cry, Mary. Good evening. Come in. Yeah. Who are you? What do you want? I want my wife. Your wife? Mary? Yeah, Mary. Where is she? What is it, Paul? Something wrong? Dan, this man says he's Mary's husband. That's what I said. Just a minute. Who are you? I said I'm Mary's husband. Isn't that good enough? Dad, I know who this man is. Oh, yeah? Dad, take a good look at him. He's that gangster. You've seen his picture in the paper any number of times. Why? Yes. Madden. That's right. Now, where's my wife? Madden? I don't believe Mary's your wife. And you're not going to see her. I tell you, she is my wife, and I want to see her right now. Mr. Madden, let me tell you something about Mary. She was born and raised in this town. She was an orphan. And I raised her here in this house, a member of my own family. So what? Mr. Madden, Mary loved my son. This is my son. She went away to the city for a singing career. When she had enough of it, she was coming home to marry my son. Oh, don't bother to tell him that. Just a minute, Paul. Madden, Mary didn't go to the city to mingle with such as you, let alone marry you. Listen, white whiskers. In my day, I smacked down plenty of guys for talking back to me. Yes. And we know just how you smack them down. With a gun. You better look out how you talk. Nobody ever proved I used a gun on anybody. We know all about that, too. You've been tried for murder three times, but you shake off a murder charge like a duck shakes off water. <laughs> you know all about me, don't you? All I want, though. Dad, phone for the police. I'll see that he stays where he is. <laughs> yes. Well, now, ain't he the brave boy, though? Listen, White Whiskers. Before I came in here, I cut your telephone wires. So don't bother trying to telephone. Madden, this will get you exactly nothing. Yes. Mary. Mary, get back in there. Uh, I'm afraid alone. Yeah, well, you don't have to be afraid anymore, Mary. I've come to take you back home. Home? Who are you? Now, Mary, don't tell me you don't know your little Danny, Mary. Mary? Ah, you see, poor kid. She's sick talking like that. She's sick, all right. And unless I'm mistaken, you know what she's sick about. Yeah? What does that crack mean? Suppose you tell me. All right, smart guy. Maybe I will tell you. I thought you could. Mary, please go back in there and close the door. Yes. Yes. Okay, gents. You want it, so you'll get it. Mary's got a good reason for being like she is. You know why? Why? Because she croaked a guy, that's why. And she got this way from the shock of it. I don't believe it. Nor do I. No, of course you don't. But I'm a guy that knows. Madden, none of these lies will get you anything. Mary is not leaving here. Is that so? Well, okay. And I'm not leaving either, see? She's my wife. And if she stays, I stay. Get it? <laughs> Looking in the outer lobby or downstairs, please. Let me ask this question. Would you be surprised to know that Campana has spent over $600,000 exclusive of advertising in the last five or six years for the sole purpose of educating women on how to use Italian bomb correctly? 
Perhaps you'll say why that sounds silly. All you do is put Italian balm on your face and hands, just like any other lotion. Well, the truth is you don't use Italian balm just like any other lotion. Italian balm is rich, full body, and just a little goes a long, long way. Too much for application does not give satisfactory results. That's why Campana invented the dispenser idea, now in use in over three million homes, because the Italian bomb dispenser gives you just one drop at a time. That's why each Italian bomb carton says, use sparingly. This product spreads widely. And let me say this to you. We know that Italian bomb is a definitely superior preparation. It contains the costliest ingredients to be found in any of the largest selling brands. Yet its cost to use is so small, because it goes so far, that you can't find any greater economy in any lotion. Right now, you can get the famous Italian bomb dispenser at your drug or department store in a special package containing a 60-cent bottle of Italian bomb and the dispenser. Here is the ideal and convenient way to use this soothing skin softener. It lets down exactly the right amount for an application to both hands, and the 60-cent bottle contains nearly 500 dispenser applications. Save money. Ask for the dispenser package tomorrow. Tell us what the trouble is. You tell us about Madden. 
Madden. How do you know about Madden? Madden's here in this house, Mary. Here? He followed you here. Where is he? In the living room. He wants to take you away. Oh, no. He said you were his wife. That's not true. I don't even know him. It's not true. He knew it wasn't true, Mary. Paul, Madden came here to kill me. To kill you? Yes. I saw him shoot a man. I saw him commit murder. Murder? You saw him? Yes, in the street. I, I walked around the corner just as he did it. Did Madden see you? Yes. There was another man, too. He hollered out, Madden, the girl saw you. And then I, I ran back and got into my car, and Madden shouted, Get her! And Paul, I was terrified. I, I drove away as fast as I could. I, I saw another man get into a car and come after me. Yes. I remember driving the two blocks, terrified, and I, and I don't remember anymore. That's when Amnesia struck you, dear. You drove home instinctively. If Madden's here, you'll kill me, Paul. Paul, oh, we've got to have him arrested. Other people have tried that, and they are dead. Hey, open that door. What's the idea? Open the door. Mary, listen, that's Madden. Oh. You've got to pretend amnesia. You're bewildered. You echo words. You're stunned. Can you do it? Yes. Come on, open it up. Just a minute. Careful now, Mary. What's the idea of locking the door? In my own home, Madden, I intend to lock any door I please. Yeah? You're a pretty tough customer, ain't you? Oh. Hello, Mary. How you feeling? Come on. Look up here. What are you afraid of? Afraid? Ah, it is nothing to be scared of. I'll take care of you. Nobody's going to hurt you. Come on now. Get your hat and coat on. I'm taking you out of here right now. You're not taking her out of here? Oh, yes, I am. What's more, I got a couple of little jobs to do right here before we go. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and your old man, Mr. Smart Guy. Just where do you think I was when you were pulling that hypnotism at? <gasps> yeah, Mary. You ain't so full of amnesia now, are you? I was outside that door listening to the whole thing. So you told what you knew, didn't you? I didn't mean it, Madden. Listen, Madden, you, you can take me out of here. You can do what you want with me, but please, let them alone. Mary, just a minute. He's not going to take you out of here. No? I suppose you're going to stop me. Yes, I'll stop you. Madden, put away that gun! Yeah? Listen, my friend. There are three people who know that I bumped off Al Malone. Now, if you don't think I'm going to do something about those three people, you've got another guest coming. <laughs> on the second act of tonight's play in the Little Theater of Times Square. Smoking notes, sales are in the outer lobby, please. Now then, let's talk over something important. I'm authorized by Campana to make a startling offer tonight to every woman in this coast-to-coast -coast audience. Listen carefully, please, for here's the sensational news. Campana wants to give you, absolutely free, a full 20-cent jar of their amazing facial cleansing pads, Dress Skin Coolie. You get this jar without one penny of cost. It's a gift. This is Campana's way of allowing you to judge for yourself how convenient coolies are. Why so many women call coolies the greatest advance in face cleansing methods in years. Coolies, you know, are soft, round discs of cloth saturated with dress skin. They're quick, convenient, and sanitary. Each pad gives you a complete 60-second facial, removing dirt, shiny oil, makeup, leaving your skin perfectly prepared for fresh makeup. Coolies are ideal for use on the go, traveling, shopping, dancing. And for home use, to remove makeup before going to bed, you'll find them a real blessing. To get your free 20-cent jar of coolies, ask tomorrow at your drug or department store for the 35-cent Italian Bomb Coolies Combination Package. You get the 35-cent bottle of Italian Bomb at no increase in price, plus the free 20-cent jar of coolies. Both products for the price of the Italian Bomb alone. Get this bargain now while it's available. <laughs> Your type. Every line of your face spells cowardice from the weak mouth to the shifty, watery eyes. 
You're kind of stuck to have a gun to behave like a man. Eh? What are you trying to do? Get me to put up this gun and handle you with my bare hands? Oh, no, no. A yellow rat doesn't give up his only source of security. <laughs> You're pretty smart, ain't you? All you've got to do is make me ashamed of myself for a coward. I put up the gun and we go at it with this. And then somebody clips me on a head from behind and it's all over. <laughs> ain't that a smart trick now? It's certainly something a coward wouldn't risk. Yeah. You know what, smart guy? I think I'm going to give you your wish. I think maybe it'd be fun bashing in that case of yours. The fun's waiting for you if you want it. Sure, I want it. But it ain't going to work out the way you think. Now listen, all three of you. Once there were some people that turned me into the cops and figured they'd be witnesses in a nice little murder trial for me. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. But something happened to them before they could get down to the courthouse to testify. I thought you understood we knew all about that. I just wanted to make sure, that's all. Well, you still looking for a fight? I think so. Okay, but I'm warning you, all three of you. My gun goes in my pocket, see? And as long as it's fair fighting, it stays there. But if anybody tries any funny business, so help me, I'll plug you. Don't worry. It'll be a fair fight. Okay. The gun's in my pocket. Come on, fight. Oh, don't, please. Mary, stay back. Keep it back, Dad. Well, I'm waiting. Yes, and you'll get what you're waiting for. Oh, please, stay back. All right. Get up. You can do it, Paul. Get up, get up, Paul. Yeah. Get up, Paul. Come on. Oh, Paul. Mary, look up. Get out of the way. Madden, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, but come on and do it. He's done. He's done. Quick, get it done. I'll get it Oh, he doesn't move. I think he's dead. Uh, no, he isn't dead. He's just out cold. What do we do with him, Paul? I don't know. Yes, I do. I know what we'll do with him. What? We'll finish, Mr. Madden. Paul, you can't kill him. I'm not going to kill him. He's going to do it all himself. Give me a hand with him, Dad. I want to sit him up in this armchair. What is it, son? What are you going to do? I'm going to manufacture a little justice. Listen, come on, help me. That's it. Madden and make yourself comfortable. What are you going to do? you see. Mary, turn off the light. Yes, Paul. Now we'll just swing the chair around so that Mr. Madden faces the candlelight. There, that's better. Son, you can't hypnotize this man. You'll see. But Paul, you know you can't hypnotize an unwilling subject. I can if I catch him in a moment when his will is dulled. But how? When he begins to come to, that's the chance. If I can put him under quickly, he'll have no will to resist. He's coming out of it, Paul. Quiet now. Don't speak a word. I've got to work fast. Madden. Madden. Uh-huh. Open your eyes, Madden. That's it. Don't move. Stay just as you are. Madden, there's a light straight ahead of you. Candlelight. That's it. Look at it. Keep looking. Keep looking. Uh-huh. Madden, you're going back to sleep. You're going back to sleep at once. The light. The candlelight, Madden. Keep looking. Keep looking. Sleep, Madden. Close your eyes. You're going to sleep. Sleep. Sleep, Madden. Sleep. He's out, Paul. Yes. Madden, now open your eyes. That's it. Now look at me. That's it. Now listen. Listen to every word. Madden, I'm going to send you away from this house. It won't be your own will that takes you away. It will be my will. Because you're going to do what I say. Exactly what I say. You're going to leave this house with only one purpose ahead of you. From now on, you're going to tell the truth. You're going to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Do you hear, Madden? You're going back to the city where you came from. And you're taking only one thing with you. Truth. For you, the deadly truth. There's a grand jury sitting, Madden. You'll go to them. You'll confess to the murder of Hal Malone. You'll confess to your other crimes and you'll stick to your story. You'll stick to the truth until the truth makes a finish of you. You hear me? Answer me. You hear me? Yes. The truth, you understand? Yes. All right. Get up. Madden. The door to the street is open. It's the door into the night. The blackest night you ever stepped into. Blackest because you carry your own doom in your own hands. I might have killed you, Madden. 
But I don't want even your evil blood on my conscience. I might have turned you over to the police in the regular way, but you're too slick for the regular way. And so I send you this way. To bring yourself to justice. Yeah. But before you go, I want you to tell me what you're going to tell those who ask you. Speak. What are you going to tell? I kill Hal Malone. I kill Red Adams. I kill my own brother. My own brother. Let him take that story and the rest of it to those who want to know. Down there at the next corner, you'll meet a policeman. Tell it to him. He'll help you on your way. Now, good night, Madden. And may God have mercy on you. Oh, Paul. Mary, dear. Mary, don't. Let her cry, Father. It'll do her good. Come here, Mary. Come here. <laughs> Now, before we move on to a smart party at an uptown supper club, remember that daylight saving time becomes effective day after tomorrow. Therefore, next Friday, if your community does not have daylight time, tune in first nighter one hour earlier than tonight. If your community does observe daylight savings, then tune in at the usual hour. And now we move out of the theater and into the street. Here's your cab, Mr. First Lander. Thank you. Good night.